Welcome to ER Mentorship Hub, your premier platform for medical education and professional development. In this session, we're learning about anal fissures, a prevalent condition with potential for significant morbidity. We'll cover pathophysiology, diagnostic considerations, and the latest in management strategies. Understanding Anal Fissures Anal fissures represent a common yet complex condition characterized by linear ulcers or tears in the anaderm, situated predominantly at the anal verge. Their clinical significance stems from their frequent presentation with acute anal pain and bleeding, posing considerable diagnostic and therapeutic challenges. Pathophysiology The pathogenesis of anal fissures is multifactorial. A primary tear is often precipitated by trauma, such as the passage of hard stools, leading to a cycle of pain, sphincter spasm, and compromised blood flow to the anaderm. This ischemia exacerbates the condition, hindering the healing process and potentially contributing to chronicity. Risk factors Risk factors for the development of anal fissures include chronic constipation, leading to increased straining and trauma, diarrhea, which can irritate the anaderm, and childbirth, which can cause direct injury. Other contributing factors may include previous anorectal surgery, anal intercourse, and systemic diseases that affect blood flow or tissue integrity. Clinical Implications and Complications Clinically, anal fissures are acutely painful, particularly during and immediately following bowel movements. Chronic fissures may lead to complications such as a sentinel pile, hypertrophied anal papillae, and even secondary infection. The chronicity of a fissure is often marked by persistent symptoms beyond six weeks, necessitating a more aggressive treatment approach. Diagnostic Challenges Diagnosing anal fissures typically involves a careful clinical examination, prioritizing visual inspection to identify the tear. Digital rectal examination and endoscopy may be deferred initially due to pain, with these investigations being more pertinent for atypical cases or when assessing for underlying pathologies. Patients typically present with acute pain during defecation, accompanied by rectal bleeding. While most common in the 30 to 50 year age group, they can occur at any age, impacting quality of life significantly. Etiology and classification. Etiologically linked to trauma from constipation or diarrhea, fissures are classified as acute or chronic based on duration. Acute fissures last less than six weeks, with chronic ones extending beyond this period, often necessitating more intensive intervention. Treatment overview. Initial management focuses on symptom amelioration through the WASH regimen alongside dietary adjustments. In refractory cases, pharmacological therapies are indicated. The WASH regimen, encompassing warm baths, analgesia, stool softeners, and high-fiber diets, forms the cornerstone of conservative treatment aimed at reducing sphincter spasm and facilitating stool passage. Warm baths SITS baths offer symptomatic relief, aiding muscle relaxation and decreasing discomfort. Analgesia Analgesic options should be judiciously considered, with NSAIDs often utilized to manage acute pain. Stool softeners and high-fiber diet Optimizing stool consistency through softeners and dietary fiber is critical in preventing recurrence and facilitating healing. For persistent fissures, topical anesthetics and vasodilators like nitroglycerin gel are effective in promoting healing through sphincter relaxation and improved blood flow, albeit with potential side effects such as headache. Advanced Management Strategies Surgical intervention, primarily lateral internal sphincterotomy, is reserved for cases unresponsive to conservative and medical therapy, a scenario less commonly encountered in emergency settings but important for comprehensive care. Complications and Special Considerations Complications, while infrequent, can encompass infection, bleeding, and chronic fissure development. 
Importantly, secondary fissures may indicate systemic diseases such as Crohn's disease or HIV, especially patients who are poorly controlled with high viral loads and low CD4 counts, necessitating a thorough evaluation for underlying pathology in atypical or recalcitrant cases. Differential Diagnosis A precise diagnosis of anal fissures is pivotal, yet challenging, given the overlap in symptoms with other anorectal conditions. Let's explore the differential diagnosis to enhance our diagnostic acumen. Hemorrhoids Hemorrhoids, both internal and external, are often mistaken for fissures. While fissures present with sharp pain during defecation, hemorrhoids typically cause discomfort, itching, and bleeding without defecation. Proctoscopy can aid in distinguishing between these conditions. Perianal abscesses and fistulae. Perianal abscesses and fistulae may also mimic the pain and bleeding associated with fissures. Abscesses present with significant swelling and erythema, while fistulae may have an external opening. Diagnosis often requires physical examination and imaging. Inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. Inflammatory bowel diseases, such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, can cause anorectal lesions that resemble fissures. However, these conditions often have additional systemic symptoms and require endoscopic evaluation for confirmation. Infections Anorectal infections, including those caused by sexually transmitted infections, STIs, like herpes simplex virus and syphilis, can present with ulcers and pain. Detailed history and laboratory tests are crucial for accurate diagnosis. Anorectal cancer Though less common, anorectal cancer should be considered, especially in patients with non-healing lesions or significant weight loss. Biopsy may be necessary to rule out malignancy in suspicious cases. Accurately distinguishing anal fissures from these conditions is essential for targeted management. A thorough history, physical examination, and appropriate diagnostic tests guide us towards the correct diagnosis and prevent unnecessary treatments. As clinicians, our goal is to approach each case with a differential diagnosis in mind, ensuring we provide the most effective care for our patients. Stay curious, continue learning, and always consider a broad spectrum of possibilities in your clinical practice. We trust that this detailed exploration of anal fissures has armed you with valuable insights into their management and treatment. In the dynamic field of healthcare, your proficiency and up-to-date knowledge serve as the foundation for delivering exceptional patient care. If this presentation has enhanced your understanding, we encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to ER Mentorship Hub for further educational content. Keep an eye out for our upcoming videos, where we will delve into more vital healthcare topics. Until our next encounter, continue to refine your skills and elevate the standard of care you provide. Thank you for dedicating your time to professional growth and patient welfare.